Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with a starting commander guide video. In this video, we're going to talk about Eowyn and Faramir, who you get for starting in these factions that I'll put on the screen right now. We already talked about Dwalin and Haldir, so I'll link their video up in the top right if you're curious about those commanders. But today we're talking about Eowyn and Faramir, so let's get into it. Now, before I jump into the actual sheet, I want to remind everyone these are starting builds for players new to the game or restarting who have little experience with the game. So we've excluded things like gold gear, tier four units, uh, neutral units, non-role play builds, that kind of stuff, just to keep it very, very simple. Obviously, if you have some tips, feel free to leave those down below because maybe players would like to go through and read what might be applicable to their season. And if I see really good comments that are universal, I'll go ahead and pin those down below. But just a reminder, these are the very starting builds the goal to prevent people from running just bad builds. If you're running Faramir and running an all melee build, for example, we may want to steer away from that. We're going to look first at his minimum optimal respect, which is going to be respect five. To really get the most out of him, we are going to need that respect five tree. And the maximum respect is going to be respect 24. He doesn't really gain anything from 25, so you are going all the way. 24 is really the spot to stop. Now for strength for Faramir, we have early round troop damage increase. It's not 100% specific to range, but I'll explain in a second why we are going to go for the ranged build here based on the gear that we have available, as well as potential future use with his R10 unique item. For ideal troops, we're going to look at sharpshooters in 50%, sentinels in 30%, and guards of tower at 20%. As is always the case, if you find your front line, in this case, the guards of tower is going down too fast, you could put a little bit more of them in. And there are other options like cataphracts or dunedain or other things that are melee troops who will take the hits first in most cases and allow your ranged troops to do more damage. So play with the ratios in your server and your experiences to find out what works best for you. For gear, we're going to go with the Mirkwood Bow with ranged might. We're going to go with the Scale Mail with melee vigor. And I did get a few comments in how there's video talking about the Hunter Skin with ranged vigor as a very good option. So I think that and the Superior Hauberk with the Fire Protection on Faramir could all be fantastic options. Again, kind of depending on what gear you have. If you're a brand new player, you might not have all these to choose from. So I like the Scale Mail with melee vigor because it adds more defense and it adds a damage reduction to your guards the tower who are going to be tanking for your ranged troops so i think it helps them out which is important but you could also very easily be an arnor running their tier four who is a ranged who tanks for ranged so you could run the hunter skin there and get very very good use we're then going to run the trappers with hysteria and finally we are going to run the wizard's fireworks with hunter's mark lastly looking at the skill order priority we're going to start with the r3 tree and go into guide followed by the r5 tree in air then we're looking at nobility for the third option maxing that out then we're going down to the Rangers of Athelion Tree and maxing out the title with 15 points. Then we're going to go into Rush with 7 points. And our last 2 points for the R5 build that we're looking at here is going to go into Flanking. Obviously, if you have more skill points, you can finish out the rest of the Flanking build. And as you continue to build Faramir, if you're doing so, you can continue finishing out skills like Armed Escort. You can do skills like Foresight if you have a different accessory that doesn't already give you Pursuit. Things like that you can do with extra respect as you move forward. Now, as far as the R10 item goes, Faramir is actually the first in this series who's going to get a pass from me. Faramir has a fantastic R10 item that gives might focus and speed to himself. Unit defense for men. So we are going to try and focus on men if possible in these builds. And this is the big thing. This is why we kind of are looking for ranged gear now. And we're using ranged troops uh, because we're working towards this kind of build, which is going to work really well. As you'll see, it says first two rounds, Faramir and allied ranged units gain initiative. So they act first in the first two rounds and they deal an extra 10% damage per refinement. So at max refinement, you see here, they are gonna deal 60% extra damage, making Faramir very, very much a early round nuke. He's a lot of fun to use. So definitely one that you can consider investing in and an R10 item that I think is worth investment, especially compared to the ones we've looked at so far in the series. For A, when we have the minimum optimal respect at five and the maximum optimal respect at 21, her strengths are gonna be mounted men buffing. And the ideal troops here we have are Cavaliers, cataphracts and rem riders in 40 percent 40 percent and 20 percent respectively now everything she does buffs men it buffs melee and it buffs mounted troops so if they meet all those criteria those are the troops you want to run now there aren't two normally accessible men that are mounted that are tier three so we went ahead and put the ram riders in here because they have a good defense sound which can help but if you have access to something in later season like three riders or shire protectors if you have a tier four like swan knights or marshals Anything like that, if they have the men tag, if they're mounted and they are melee, they're fantastic. Something like the bow and I, I would avoid if possible because they are not only not men, 
they are ranged. So they just don't get the benefit from her full kit. Next up for weapons, we're going to do the Cutlass with Melee Might, the Scout's Mail with Deafness, the Horseman's Helm with Resolve, and the Hith Lane with Mend. Next for the skill order priority, we're going to go into the White Lady of Rohan first, which is going to give us a nice heal for all of our mounted troops. They're also going to gain stun immunity with this ability, so that's why we use the helmet that has madness immunity. So now we have madness and stun immunity, which is very, very good. We're then going to max out the Rohirrim Pre for some extra damage, followed by nobility for extra damage for our men troops and Frontline Rescue, which is going to be a heal for our melee unit. Then we're going to go into Riding Excellence, which is going to give us negative 14% damage received for our mounted units. And our final points are going to go into Shield Maiden, which is again for melee units. They're going to have a chance of reducing the physical damage they receive by a certain percentage. So I think you'll get six points into here at level 50 respect five with imparted wisdom. So if you have her at a little higher respect, I would just put more points into shield maiden to continue protecting your melee units. Now for Eowyn's unique, the Rohan's refuge, it is going to get a fail for me, but it's not a bad item. I want to clarify in the first video where we talked about Dwall and we talked about how there, it was a more clear fail. Don't go for it. This one, just as a new player, I think it's good. You have an understanding of the meta before you go into a piece like this. What this does is for the first four rounds, for melee units, which you should be running, you're going to reduce the range damage they receive by up to, I think it's 40%, 30%. So 30% reduced range damage, which is which is not bad. It just depends on what you're seeing and you have to get used to using her a little bit more situationally. Now, can't you do well against some of the meta range builds in the game with this? It can definitely help, but it's not one that's universally looked on as the best in slot for her. I think it's got some use. So it's going to get a fail just for this video for a quick reference. But as you go on, you could, if you really like running A1 and the Mounted Commanders, you could definitely look to revisit this down the road once you have an understanding of what the meta is really looking like for you. Now, I made this comment in my last video, but I just want to remind everyone that these builds are at Respect 5, Level 50, and they do include Imparted Wisdom, which is down here. If you go below the gear, there's this little sword icon. You click this, and you're going to be able to give gear to your commanders to impart wisdom to them. Once you have a surplus starting of green and then blue gear, you can give those to the commanders and it upgrade their imparted wisdom up to four times, which gives you an additional four skill points, as well as letting your gear be familiar up to 50% with them starting out. So if you're in a new season and you start them with gear and they have this all done, every level takes care of a different slot. So level one, you're going to have your, your weapons, level two armor, so on and so forth. So if you put a new piece of gear on, they'll start at 50% familiarity instead of 0%. But I just wanted to make that reminder because if you are looking at this and maybe you are at level 50 and respect five, but you don't have all the points that we're talking about, it might be because you're missing the imparted wisdom here. And one more note before we wrap things up, we'll be covering the evil commanders for when you start in Mordor, Rune, and Angmar, respectively. We'll have guides for all those commanders coming out very shortly, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those. And in addition to those, we'll be covering Yusra and Marion Pippin as well, because they're actually bonus starting commanders you get for good and evil, respectively. When you unlock the tavern and the tips feature, they give you each of those commanders, uh, depending on whether they're good or evil, to start with. So we'll do a build guide for Marion Pippin and Yustra very soon as well. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on those videos. And that will do it for our video on AO and Fair. I hope you found that helpful. Again, the resources that were referenced in the video are all linked down in the description below. So if you want to use those, share those, whatever you'd like to do, if it's helpful, please feel free to do so. But that'll do it for me this one, and I'll see you all in a future video. Uh -huh.